Hey, thanks for joining us online today. We truly believe that God wants to do so much in you and through you wherever you are in life. As you listen to this message, we encourage you to have an open mind and an open ear to what God is saying. You can also follow along with the sermon notes we've provided on our website and in our church app. Well, good morning, everyone. I pray all is well. Uh, did, you, did you enjoy the movie last week, Saving Mr. Banks? It's so powerful. I, uh, first time I watched that, my of course, my background, having an alcoholic father, I, I, I really struggled to contain the emotion of it. So I understand it was probably pretty heavy for, for each of you. Uh, we were away uh, with our family uh, on a lake with our grandchildren. So thank you for that incredible little break. I was trying to teach my grandson how to feed fish. So I took a couple slices of bread down to the docks with him. Uh, he took opportunity to take off on the dock, outrunning me. He doesn't swim. And then when I tried to get him to feed the fish, he just threw all the bread in the water. And that was, that was the lesson for the day. Hey, we're beginning a brand new series called uh, The Blessing. And I did a series several years ago, much like this, but I've changed it up a bit. We live in such a toxic culture that it seems as if there's always this fear, this tension, fighting, division, just this ooh, anger that's really brimming out of control in our culture today. And that, Lord, what can we do in our families, in our lives, in our businesses, Lord, to be able to counter a very antichrist, ungodly culture? What can we do? Can we make a difference? Can we make a change? And yes, we can. So today I'm going to be sharing with you how to create a cycle of blessing. Why I entitle it this is because biblically this is possible. That in life, uh, having cycles of blessing is what we're after. Many of you who have retirement accounts, most of you, the retirement account didn't come because you were disciplined to put that money into a 401k, but there is possibly a matching program with your, your, the business you work for, maybe the school you work for. And so money was automatically taken out of your account. How many of you, that's the case? And it, it grew, it grew, and it, and it grew just a little bit over time. Well, so the same in cycles of spiritual blessing. You can do things on a regular basis that will bring these expected results from time to time. Now, when I talk about the blessing, I'm not talking about the absence of pain and conflict because you can have a blessed life and still have stormy days. You can still have disappointment in your life. But when you're living the blessed life, how you view the storm is different. And when you come out of the storm, you're different for the better. I want you to look here at 1 Peter chapter 3. Don't repay evil for evil, which is what we're experiencing in the world today. Don't retaliate with insults when people insult you. Instead, pay them back with a blessing. That's what God has called you to do. Literally, we have the call of God upon our lives to do just this. That when adversity comes, when insults come, when people say ugly things to us, uh, they don't owe us an apology as believers. We owe them a blessing. Look what it says. Pay them back with a blessing. Because that's what we're called to do. And he will bless you for it. In other words, this accusation comes. This insult comes. But when I choose to counter that negativity with a blessing... The Bible says that not only will I give a blessing, but I get a blessing. Guess who gets the biggest blessing? Well, I do. God will give a much bigger blessing than what I give to others. So you, you can't give what you do not have. So if you want to live a life of sharing and giving and loving, and you don't have anything in the tank to give, then you're not going to be giving anything. You're going to be living a life that is destitute of what life is all about. Let me share with you just a, a simple definition of what I call the blessed life. It's to be graced with the overflowing benefits of God's provision, 
presence and peace to be fully satisfied in God. Yeah, I've been around people before and they're so grateful for little things. Just, you, just being around them, just, uh, just so grateful. They're always saying, God's blessed me so much. Can, can you believe? Sometimes I have to pinch myself. God has given me so many wonderful things. And then other people, they live kind of in a, a woe is me, uh, more of a victim mentality. I can't believe this has happened to me again. And uh, they're always playing the blame game and never grateful for what God has given. And, and if that is you, you, you can change. Because sometimes that's me, that I have to deal with those feelings of insecurity, rejection, feeling overlooked, feeling that God's mad at me. And uh, when everything breaks, when the cars you know, shut down, when uh, the investments don't work out, it's easy to get into the woe is me life. But how do you know you're not living in the blessing? How do you know there could possibly be kind of a reversal of fortune in your life? What are the telltale signs or the symptoms of not living in the blessing? So here are a few of them. First of all, you know something's missing, always seeking more yet never feeling satisfied. I mean, you're always pushing that rock up the mountain. Just, it's just this straining, striving, but never fully achieving. Always seeking more, but yet never being satisfied. And uh, because it's, when you have an empty place in, in your soul, physical things seem to be able to satisfy for a very short amount of time. And you get into it, you think, oh, this, this is great. This, this is what I'm all about, man. This hobby is everything. And so you think if one is good, two must be better. Oreos. <laughs> one is good. I want the whole package. I just can't stop. And, and we're wired that way. That, man, if one is good, give me a whole garage full of... I, I, I want more cars. I was watching a documentary the other day on Tim Allen. I love Tim Allen. And he was going through talking about all the cars that he had collected through the years of uh, being on that show, Home Improvement. And he was going through talking about that. Well, with every car, he seemed to be less excited. He started out with the first car. And he was just, I just... And you thought, no wonder he's collecting so many cards. But by the time he got around to the final car, you could tell he was worn out. He's like, I don't even know why I have this car. You see, sometimes we think if it just had one more. But yet, one more brings more maintenance problems, uh, more headaches, more difficulties. You got to put more gas in it. It just, more is not always better. But yet, we believe the myth of more. And we don't understand when we get more and then all of a sudden, the satisfaction is no longer there. Um, I come from a, a long family of addiction. I'll never forget when my father, he came in to the house and uh, he would pour himself uh, a drink, uh, roll crown, he'd pour him a glass, put some Coke in it, and, um, and, and then it was two drinks. And then uh, my sister was stealing his royal crown and filling it up with water. And uh, so it was like three drinks. And he took him a while to figure it out. And boy, was he mad. So anyway, my sister, Charlotte, telling on you right now, girl. But he it just, one wasn't enough. In order to alleviate some stress, get rid of some pain, he was a business owner. Uh, he, he just drank more and more. And more. I, I realize that I, this is our life, that it may not be alcohol, it may be something different, but we have this predisposition when life feels so dissatisfying to want something else and to want something more. Here's another one always seeking approval, yet never feeling accepted. Uh, this see me, see me, knows me, my, my children. Bradley, Jenny, Katie, Molly, they were always, dad, watch, watch this, dad, watch this, dad. They always wanted 
me to approve what they were doing. I think all children are that way. We want to know that we're, that we're being pleasing uh, to a parent. We want to hear that, way to go, well done. As hopefully we're going to hear that from our Heavenly Father one day. And, but children that never receive that from parents or coaches or teachers, there's this chasm within them that can never be filled. They're always seeking approval. These individuals, we use the term people pleasers. And you talk about a life of frustration. They want to be loved. They want to be liked. They want to be accepted. But the more they try to seek approval, the more distant uh, they push other people away. And that may be some of us here today. Always seeking approval, yet never feeling a part of the team. Accept it. Here's another one. Always seeking love, yet but never feeling uh, loved. This love is so elusive today because it's so misunderstood today. I, I want to encourage you, for your marriage's sake, come join us at the end of the month for this, this marriage conference, this couple's gathering with Joe McGee. You have to work to keep marriage strong. It's so easy to drift in marriage. And one week you'll think we're on top of the world, we've never been more in love, and then the next week we're sleeping in different rooms. <laughs> And it's not just because I'm snoring. I, yeah, I'm not getting too personal here. But uh, Bradley's bed was very comfortable the other night. <laughs> All right. Never feeling loved. And, and, and you know, you're missing out on the contentment, peace, and blessing of God when this, this place in your heart is never filled. Now, true love can only be filled by God the perfect love of God. And I pray with all my heart that you're able to experience that today if you've never experienced it. Because unless it begins with God, there will always be a chasm. All right, here's another one. Always seeking peace, yet always feeling fearful. For example, always seeking this, we, you know, no tension, no fighting, but yet this, it's elusive. There's this fear. Uh, uh, now, uh, we really don't have peace in our nation. Uh, there's a lot of anxiety, uh, a lot of fear about tomorrow, uh, a lot of non-trust. I have some of these other day, I, you know, money-wise, I have no, I don't trust this, I don't trust that. Everything seems so unstable. Our money systems, our government systems, our, our relationships, people getting along, and we, we long for this peace. But there's a lot of fear in the world today. The blessing of God can help you navigate tense times with this, this amazing peace that passes understanding. And I believe some of you will receive that today. And here, here's another one. Always striving to get ahead, but always falling further behind. I try, I try, and the harder I try, it seems I'm getting further behind in life. And if that's you, there's this wonderful promise uh, in the scriptures that says that, that the righteous will grow as bright as the dawn, brighter, brighter till the noonday, that the path of the righteous like the dawn, it grows brighter till the noonday. It doesn't mean that there are no more shadows, but it does mean that collectively, over time, we progress. He's made you the head and not the tail above, not below. So getting on track with the right things in life, it should turn around the right things in your world to be cycles of blessing. Look at Psalm 37, I love this scripture. Delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. Now, I kind of hated this scripture for the longest time. And Denise, you know why. We went on a mission trip to Jamaica. And it was during that time that I thought, I think I might be interested in Denise. I think I might be interested in her. So um, we're walking along one day and this guy comes up and says to Denise, I want you as my wife. 
She said, what? I said, what? (laughs) He said, the Bible says that the Lord will give me the desires of my heart. And I took her hand and I said, she belongs to me. That's where it all began, right there. That's... (laughs) Delight yourself in the Lord. When he becomes your first delight, your desires get centered in him. Your desires change to be the right desires in life. But I'm going to share with you three daily disciplines for a life of blessing. You can either experience the pain of discipline or the pain of regret in life. Discipline, when you have discipline, it will lead itself to the right things in your life. Discipline, delight, or desire, and then delight. Look at this verse. Praise the Lord. How joyful are those who fear the Lord and delight in obeying his commands. Their children will be successful everywhere. An entire generation of godly people will be blessed. This cycle, this generational cycle of blessing and succession and wonder, wow, but when you delight yourself in the Lord, Delight in obeying his commands. Their children will be successful everywhere. A generation of godly people will be blessed. What I'm saying is, is that when you have consistent discipline, daily discipline, all of a sudden you, you encounter this desire that when you first start working out, it's painful. It's just you hate it. It's just terrible. You get a little sick. You get winded. You come home. You're grumpy. You're grouchy. And you're sore for the next two days. And yet, if you continue that, Uh, Maybe two years later, (laughs) you wake up and say, I kind of feel better. Maybe someone says, I I think you're losing weight. Best compliment anyone could ever give me. All right, not that it's true. You didn't have to laugh like that. (laughs) Discipline, desire, and then delight. I, I just, this, this delight, I, I so delight in serving God. I so delight in my quiet time with him. I so delight getting into the word of God and his spirit getting into me. It's a delight for me. And you see, there are things in the world that have become delights. Why? Because you've created these habits and these cycles that you say you love this when, when in fact it's killing you. It doesn't love you. And you have to exchange the one for the other. And when you delight yourself in the Lord, he'll give you the desires of your heart. You see, the Bible says the blessing of the Lord makes rich. He adds no sorrow to it. It's not an issue of more stuff. It's an issue of your attitude in life. Of knowing that I am blessed to be a blessing. I'm not blessed to be a hoarder in life. I'm going to help other people. I'm going to put smiles on some faces. I'm going to shine brighter in this dark world. I'm going to honor God in everything that I do. So here are three disciplines that if you do this, you're going to set some things on a trajectory to put into like an orbit, blessings of God in your life and in your family. Number one, I will speak the blessing. Say that with me. I will speak the blessing. There's so much that has to do with our words. Again, don't repay evil for evil. Don't retaliate with insults when people insult you instead. Pay them back with a blessing. Uh, And that is a verbal blessing. It's what God has called you to do. Now, here in the South, we have a tendency to say things like, bless their heart. (laughs) They just don't know. Yeah, we, we say bless them, but we're really just kind of buffering an insult. That's not the blessing I'm talking about. And by the way, we only do that in the South. So anyway, <laughs> here we go. Uh, next scripture. Never let ugly or hateful words come from your mouth, but instead let your words become, I love the expression, beautiful gifts. Then encourage others, do this by speaking words of grace to help them. I'm, I'm not much of a gift giver, however. I, I love 
to do things that will honor my wife. And I was really struggling on one particular birthday, which one of the, was one of the special birthdays. And so I went to Tina McCollum, our Mother's Day out director. I said, Tina, I need help. Help me do something special for my wife. And she said, well, why don't you write down descriptive words, uh, words that are affirming and loving. And when you think of your wife, what are those words that will build her up? And I, I said, well, all right. how many of those are you looking for? And she said, well, at least 50. <laughs> okay, all right. Uh, can you help me here a little? No, I, once I got going, it just began to flow. And I put these, or she put those little pieces of paper uh, in a vase. And Denise has kept those beside her bed until I accidentally knocked it over and broke it the other day. It was just the other day. But the words are still there. The, the, words, the words are still there. The words are still there. Little things, words. Proverbs says this. Your words are so powerful that they will kill or give life. And the talkative person will reap the consequences. Meaning that, it, give me talkative people that speak blessing to others. What life givers. And you know, that's what I'm looking for here at Lakeshore Church. That if uh, talking is your gift, I want you greeting. I, I, I want you meeting. I want you sharing. I want you giving. Because the last thing you need is someone that beats others down and condemns them and makes them feel terrible. <laughs> that's not the person you need at the front door. I want people that are life givers. Speaking the blessing. Make it a daily commitment, a daily discipline when you get up in the morning to say, today I will speak the blessing over the people I meet. Speak a blessing to others. Be kind with your words. Here's the second thing. I'll live the blessing. It's not to just be something I say, something I hear, but it's going to be a part of my activity of what I do rather than just what I hear. I love Psalm 1. Blessed is the one who does not walk in step with the wicked or stand in the way that sinners take or sit in the company of mockers. But whose, oh, there it is again, whose delight is in the law of the Lord and who meditates on his law day and night. And that person is like a tree planted by the streams of water. This metaphor of a tree being planted some of you today, you need to change your family tree. I was blessed in that I married into a healthy family and they had streams of blessing flowing already in their life. Now, we didn't. Our family didn't. We were fighting against streams of addiction, streams of dysfunction, streams of just horrible things. And those streams have currents. And don't think that your children won't get caught in those currents. These things that, I mean, from grandpa to dad to me to Bradley, streams. But then there are those streams of blessing. And when you give, begin to give discipline to the things of God, the current of blessing begins to grow stronger in your life. I married into blessing, but I know that here we probably have individuals that maybe both of you come from really messed up families. I'm here to tell you that God can work miracles. He will come through for you, but you simply have to step in tune with him. There's something that you can do to create this flow that you're going to need, not just for you. That's what people don't understand. You think you're just doing it for you. No, you're doing it for your children your children's children. The Bible says each of you have been blessed with one of God's many wonderful gifts to be used in the service of others. So use your gift well. One of the reasons why we ask you to sit in a service and receive and to serve and give is because one of the ways for you to create a cycle of blessing right here in your own home church is that you begin to activate the gift of God that he's given you to be able to bless somebody else in the course of a Sunday. 
And when you do that repeatedly and people walk in, Testimony after testimony of individuals. We have people that drive over an hour to come worship here. And they said, the reason being, the people are so loving. The atmosphere is so electric. I feel accepted. I feel like a part of the family. You can't fake that. It comes from people like you sharing the gift that God has given you to build life in other people. Serving. Look at this scripture in uh, James 125. Uh, I'm going to set this up. James is a, is a hard hitter. And James is addressing the people and, uh, and he's saying this. He said, if you're a hearer of the word and yet not a doer, then you're like a man that's going to view himself in a mirror and walk away and you'll immediately forget what manner of man you are. Or in other words, the type of person you are. So if you just hear and not do, then you see what you should be in the mirror. But then you walk away and you do stuff that's not reflective of who God made you to be. Meaning that you step away from your divine origins, your divine design. And the answer to that is this. But if anyone keeps looking steadily into God's law for free men, or in other words, the perfect law of liberty. Jesus did not come to abolish the law. He came to fulfill the law meaning he came to complete everything. And it's not, in, it's, it's not burdensome, it's free. It's delight yourself in, type fun. He will not only remember it, who he is, but he'll do what it says, and God will greatly bless him in everything he does as you do the word of God. Does that make sense? So I, I'm gonna speak the blessing, but also I'm gonna live the blessing. You see, my mouth, may the words of my mouth give life, but may the actions of my life reflect my faith. So the last thing, I will give the blessing. I'm gonna speak it, I'm gonna live it, but here's the most important thing. I am blessed to be a blessing. I choose to give the blessing. Paul, the Apostle Paul, was saying in Acts chapter 20, we must help the weak in remembering the words the Lord Jesus himself said. It's more blessed to give than to receive. The greater blessing comes when you're giving the blessing to other people. When Jesus was on earth, he spent time with people that other people would just soon bypass. He spent time with the children. I always observe Who's giving notice to the one sitting by themselves? Who, who's noticing the one who looked in, walked in and looked like they've been crying? Who's noticing the one that you can tell they've got the weight of the world on their shoulders? Jesus did. And when he took children up in his arms, he, he placed his hand on them and he blessed them. And you think, well, what, what did he say? What did he say when he spoke blessing over these children? Now, we know from the Old Testament in Numbers chapter 6, this blessing, speak to Aaron and his son, saying this is the way you shall bless the children of Israel. Say to them, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift his countenance upon you and give you peace. There is this vocal affirmation, this, the words of God. And they would lay hands on the people. <laughs> For some reason, we're wired to need touch. And we're living in a world that's moving away from connection to isolation. I'm not talking about weird touch. I'm talking about family, blessing, just a touch. Some of the worst days of my life, I found a little bit of peace when someone put their hand on my shoulder and said, it's going to be okay. A blessing. I wrote out this blessing for a child of mine who was going through a hard time. 
I was feeling kind of like a failure as a parent. And um, I said, God, what do I do? I had said things that I shouldn't have said. I had things I regretted. But Lord, is there any way that my words could turn around maybe some of the ugly that I'd spewed before? Because Lord, I don't want my child to remember those insensitive, harsh, harmful words. I want them to remember life-giving words. And so I wrote this out. You can have a copy of it if you like. But it says this, it's just simply called the blessing. You will be a blessing to your teachers and you'll be an example to your friends. You'll love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, and strength. You are becoming stronger in character, wiser in decision-making, and more disciplined in life. You are a leader and not a follower. Your life will overflow with the favor and goodness of the Lord. God's grace is upon you to overcome all adversity, every, all adversity and conquer every temptation that comes your way. You will defeat fear with faith, replace worry with worship. You'll go out with joy and be led forth with peace. Your gifts and abilities will be used for the glory of God. You will serve God by serving others. You will be a diligent worker and a wise steward of money. You will honor God in every area of your life. You will be abundantly blessed and exceedingly generous. Now may, now may he provide all your needs, heal all your wounds, and fulfill all your dreams. In Christ Jesus, I pray, amen, amen. Hey, thanks for joining us online today. If you made a decision to follow Christ, we would love to send you a brand new Bible and a devotional guide to help you in your new journey of faith. To get these resources or to submit a prayer request, fill out our digital communication card by texting Lakeshore to 94000. We'd love to celebrate what God is doing in your life and help you with your next steps. Thanks again for joining us today. We hope to see you soon.